building trust in society. And this is what it's all about. We're here to talk about trust in certain cases. So as uh, William said in his book, which I will quote, I'm very proud to do this, um, what you can observe is that blockchain concept uh, currently holds trust as an atomic unit of service. That's what you said, unquote. <laughs> Uh, I think it's important because we have here the smallest cell of the mechanism, which is around trust. Um, therefore, what we observe is that uh, the blockchain technology currently challenges the um, historical and the existing trust players. That's why we're here. So we call the uh, trust shift, and that's what, that's what you say in, in, in your, your, your book, and I think, and I'm a believer of that theory, so that's why I'm here. Uh, with the team. So we've been accelerating our development of, of uh, two important topics, which is proof of liabilities, of course, and, of, and proof of reserve. So this is what we work on. And especially, of course, on blockchain, on sidechain, and uh, smart contracts that are embedded in, in, into it. So what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is we bring value and trust to our clients. This is the first point. Um, and we also do it now uh, in blockchain ecosystems. Um, next thing you have to know, of course, this is what we work on with um, Marine Ricard, who's a, our partner, Sébastien Choukroun, who's a, one of our experts in our uh, blockchain lab in Paris. Um, so what we observe is that for, for different companies, uh, I mean, many different com companies in size, in, in sector, in, in maturity, uh, um, they're looking for trust, and this is what we build for them. And notably, when startups needs needs to raise uh, to raise money, or investors uh, that seek full transparency. So those topics emerge at a higher degree, of course, when we talk about ICO. So here's the first question. Uh, in this context, let, let's just imagine I, I have a startup, and I think there's a few people here that uh, do have them. Let's say I want to raise money uh, through an ICO. So, William, what are the pros and cons? I, I kind of joke sometimes. You now I'm, I, I say that if you can fog a mirror, you can raise money on an ICO. So you know how easy it is just fog a mirror. Uh, almost, almost. I mean, this is a new way to raise money right now. Now, uh, this morning somebody asked me that is writing an article about it. If this is bad, if this is the beginning of a crash or a bubble. And, and my answer was, uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is that there is innovation that is being funded. So uh, yes, there might be some not so good things that will come out of the ICO situation right now. But if you think about it, this is exactly how the startup ecosystem is. So many startups get funded, have been funded over the years. But we don't hear about the failures too much. But in reality, 95% of startups fail. Uh, one of my startups failed too before the second one was more successful. That's OK. But here with the ICOs now, we're going to see those failures a little bit more visibly. So that's going to be a little bit, we're going to have to get used to seeing, seeing, as they say, seeing the sausage making. And sausage making is not always very pretty to, to watch. Uh, and, and that's kind of what's going on with the ICO. So it has become, there's so much money right now. A lot of wealth has been created in the uh, cryptocurrency uh, space. And about two thirds of the money that is going into new ICO has, is coming from previous gains in the ICO market itself, in the cryptocurrency gains. So it means that this circular economy that I talk about is already happening. It's a new economy of sorts where people are making money and respending it back into these companies. And I think if for companies, if they are finding it easier to raise money than to going and knocking on 30 VCs and, and, and pitching them, and then that's fine. That's fine. And, and even if there is a, a crash that happens, it's okay because nothing ever great happens without a crash. In the history of... Uh, technological paradigms that are major. And this, I'm quoting here the uh, model that Carlotto Perez, who is a known economist, uh, has written about a lot. 
it, and she's observed that there is a phase, there's an installation phase that happens, which is when the technology occurs, and then there is a deployment phase that happens after, when the technology is deploy, deployed for many, many years to come. And often, uh, what happens between the installation phase and the deployment phase, there is a crash that happens. So something bad happens. This is how the internet uh, crash happened in 99 and 2000. Because we went a little bit overboard, we overshot, and then we realized what the boundaries were, then we retracted a little bit, and now look at the web. It has been going very well since 2002 and, and right after the, the crash. So we don't know what the boundaries are with the blockchain. We don't know what is good, what is bad yet. We don't know what's going to work, what's not going to work. But the good thing is that there's lots of innovation, lots of trials, and lots of ideas being tested. And what if there are 1,000, 2,000 ideas, and what if 90% of them fail, but the good, the 10% that will succeed, or 5%, are going to give us some really great things. They will give us the next Facebook, they will give us the next Google, they will give us uh, the next companies uh, that we are waiting for.